We already know Funchess is out, but here's another question. What about the guys the Packers are playing? Which of their players are out, and how does that impact our season? Let's check that out. Before we get started, please check out the Packernet podcast, as you can see to the right. Now, weird thing is, iTunes refuses to update my logo, so that's that's not what my logo looks like on iTunes, because iTunes is dumb. Um, but you can check it out on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify, as well as everywhere. I just put those there because those are the cool ones, and the graphics look kind of cool that way. Um, also, I am on a war path to 2,000 subscribers. I'd really like to get there before... The uh, season starts, and the season technically starts, I'm talking week one. Until then, with no real preseason, no training camp, no nothing going on that I can see, that we can see, I'm saying week one, when football players are playing football, is the start of the season. So I'm hoping for 2,000 subscribers. We're kind of kind of going in that direction, um, but I've got some special stuff planned, including allowing you guys to get involved in the NFL draft videos. But beyond that... Um, I want to try to think of something to do specifically for the Packer listeners, because I know that's more of a a draft thing. But um, anyways, with that said, please subscribe to this channel. Hit the little bell notification so you never miss another video. Let's get started. Now, for the record, most teams, even if they've had players opt out, they're not really big, uh, big big-name guys. And I do want to start with the teams that have currently nobody opting out and i can't 100 percent verify the validity of this i think there might be some lesser named players that aren't quite on the list but let's just say if there's any big name players it would have been on the list also um if you're curious about who the fan to fan network representatives are i'm going to have the packers schedule down below in the comments and next to that if there is a representative if there is a youtube channel um tied to that i will have them tagged as well so that uh, you'll have a chance to check them out if you are so Interest. Interested was the word. Um, of the teams that currently don't have anybody that has opted out, we've got the Falcons, the Bucks, the 49ers, and the Colts. On that list, um, obviously there is a range of how concerning that is. Um, not that you expect people to opt out, but in terms of, shoot, we're, we're kind of in trouble. Um, the Falcons obviously are a team that I, I don't have... And I said this on my last video, as much as they can try to add or do whatever it takes, I really think the Falcons are a team that is similar to the 2018 Packers in that you really just need to blow this thing up. Something is just wrong at its core and needs to be blown up because they are the talent that they have isn't that different than the talent they had when they were just a dominant team and they never lost at home and they were perennial playoff. I mean, they've lost pieces, but but the, the gap is there's something just wrong. And it, it feels similar to the Packers where, okay, there's holes, but we've had holes before and we still dominated. What is wrong? We blew it up. We won 13 games. We went to the playoffs. We went to the NFC Championship. Right? It's just sometimes you just got to blow stuff up. So I, I don't, I'm not worried about the Falcons because they haven't done that. That's not to say we can't lose to them, but we shouldn't lose to them. Next is the Buccaneers. I'm very excited about the Buccaneers because I kind of just part of it is just as a football fan, I just want to see what they're able to do. I think they're way too hyped up. I think people look at the weapons they have. They look at Tom Brady as the greatest quarterback of all time, and they just assume you drop the greatest of all time with these wide receivers, and they're going to dominate everything. And I'm looking at it saying, okay, you've got two good wide receivers. You've got a 57-year-old quarterback um, who clearly is declining, and that's even within his system that is just dominant. And I, I, I don't know that that's going to change. you got Gronkowski coming back from retirement who, you know, I, I don't know what he's going to be able to do, but I'm not ready to just assume he's going to be great. you got a running back who's proven nothing. They showed a little graphic of, ooh, and you got uh, whatever his name is there. Like, dude, this guy's a bust. You need to replace him. On top of that, there's a ton of questions elsewhere, right? All over the place, especially along the defense. So I just think this could be a really good showdown between Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. And I think it could be a fun game. I I really think it, obviously, they could be scary. I mean, Tom Brady is a 
better, more accurate quarterback than Jameis Winston was. And you get him some of these wet. I mean, it, it could be a dominant game, but then you get the defense and just really going after Tom Brady. And I'm just excited. I'm, I'm excited for football. Just thinking about it is getting me excited. But I think that could be a fun one. Um, the Indianapolis Colts, I think, are a massively underrated team. Um, that offensive line, they added Jonathan Taylor. I think that in and of itself is just going to wreck some people. And I've said this in the past on the podcast, if the Packers don't fix what's going on with this defensive line, which if you think about it, we've been talking about maybe adding Everson Griffin. There was a rumor that we had made an offer to Snacks Harrison, and it seems weird because it's like, why are we, with all the needs we have, we should be getting wide receiver and all that stuff. Why do we keep going after defensive line? Colts, 49ers, right? A lot of the same teams we played last year that dominated us. And when we got whooped bad, where was it? It was along the defensive line. It was our, it was our run defense, right? We just got steamrolled and we couldn't fix that. We need to fix that. And if we don't, it's teams like the Colts that are going to mess us up. But remember, it's not, that's not it. It's not just that they have maybe the best offensive line in football, especially in terms of being road graders. It's not just that they added a, a workhorse back that's going to smash you in the mouth over and over and over again. It's that they upgraded their quarterback, a guy that I think is massively underrated, that's been in a terrible situation, that is in a much better situation, that went from the worst offensive line to one of the best offensive lines. It is the fact that you look at their defense. They've got a very good defense. I think the Colts are going to be a really tough game. I don't know. Could go either way. Question marks about their wide receivers, although they get T.Y. back. They get uh, their number two back. They had Pasquale or Pas- Pascal. I think Pascal is how you say his name, who was kind of left to his own devices last year, kind of by himself with a not very good quarterback. And he still performed pretty well for the Colts. But I think that's going to be a, a sneaky, really tough game. And I, I don't – I'm definitely not checking that off as a win. Um you know, the, pa- the Packers have a lot to prove to show that they can beat them. And then, of course, there's the 49ers, which um, I'm looking forward for to some redemption there. And I obviously, we can beat the 49ers, but they're a better team right now. And so uh, the only way that that happens is if the Matt LaFleur scheme really takes hold. Um, because I, I, th- I think in terms of talent, the Packers can, can go toe-to-toe. But the 49ers are a very similar ty- type of team that's just been doing this longer. They just know what they're doing, and the Packers are in year one. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know the playbook. Matt LaFleur has barely cracked it open for these guys, just giving them a little peek. And so it's like a Shanahan-Mike McCarthy hybrid offense that just doesn't really work, and it's clunky. And it, and the 40, you know, you're, you're trying to play the 49ers game, and they're just laughing at us. Like, dude, you, you guys kind of suck at this. I'm sorry, but you're, you're not very good. But year two, we've got a better quarterback. Um, I think, you know, Devontae's a better wide receiver than they have. Obviously, they have a better tight end, but hopefully those guys get better. Um, very underrated pass rush. Zadarius in 2019 was the best pass rusher in football. I will fight you over that. Um, actually, I don't have to. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will show you the information that will lead you to that. Um, I, I, I think that they have what it takes to be able to do that, but it's going to be a tough game. And so far, none of the 49ers have opted out. I want to pivot now to the NFC North. Um, all three teams have opt-outs. All three teams have lost one player, and all three teams have lost defensive linemen. Um, and it's it's interesting because the dynamic is slightly different for each. The Detroit Lions don't have a very good interior and lost a not very good player. The um, Bears have two very good players <coughs> what is that in my throat? I'm not stopping. They have two very good players. And, um, sorry, I watched Silence of the Lambs last night. And it reminded me of that thing that they wedged in somebody's throat. And I'm freaking out a little bit. It's probably not a moth. It's definitely not a moth. Um, they have two very good players. They lost one. The Vikings have one very good player. And they lost that one. Meaning, the Lions' defensive line was bad and got worse. The Vikings' offensive line was hopeful but isn't anymore the bears defensive line is still good but definitely not quite as good as it was um when you pair that with the green bay packers who are i believe going to shift much heavier into the run i I think a lot of people feel like we saw what matt lafleur's scheme was last year we did not we saw largely still a mike mccarthy style offense with some matt lafleur stuff mixed in i think we're going to get the full uh, slam a dama this this year, whatever that is. 
with AJ Dillon being able to be the workhorse back, what you know that may not be week one, but eventually they're going to give that to him. Um, you look at the defensive lines across the NFC North getting weakened, and I just think with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, they're just going to be smashing the ball down their throats over and over and over again. Um, especially with the Vikings and Detroit Lions, the Bears are still going to put up a fight with uh, Akeem Hicks and Khalil Mack, but. Um, and, you know, they've got Roquan and the linebackers and whatnot. So it's still going to be somewhat more difficult. But I still think that's going to be a major part of the plan. And, and losing um, Eddie Goldman, the Chicago Bears, who was a really good run defender, I think that's really going to cripple them. So, I, I, you know, cripples maybe an exaggeration. But it's, it's not it's not good. And so, um, you know, the Packers went 6-0 and in the NFC North last year. I don't really see that changing all that much. Um, the only way that that would – well, it, the Vikings are always, or the the Lions are always close, despite not having a good team. So they've always got a chance. The Vikings are going to have a real hard time because they are, in my estimation, slowly deteriorating. And the fact of the matter is, the Packers defense just had them licked. They just had them figured out for whatever reason. For all the Packers flaws, the one thing that they had down pat was the Vikings offense. And now we just got your defensive backs coach. So that's not, that's not going to hurt our chances of picking apart your offense. Um, and then with the Chicago Bears, you know, it's just not a very good team. We'll have to see what happens with your quarterback and whether or not that's going to help. But um, the next team I would like to look at is the Week 3 matchup against the New Orleans Saints. And you may as well have put the Saints in the uh, nobody's out list. But uh, two tight ends, Jason Van Lan and Cole Wick, are um, officially out. However... Um, that's not even their top two tight ends. They still have Jared Cook and they still have Josh Hill. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about this Saints matchup since we, you know, there's not that much to talk about in terms of just opt out. So we'll, we'll take a look at the roster a little bit. Obviously, the Saints are an absolute Goliath, but as good as their roster is, I want to look at one thing real quick here. I want to look at their matchups that aren't in their division and see what they did throughout the year. Because from what I can tell, it wasn't until week 15 when they really got into the groove. So 15, 16, 17, they were dominant, and then they get knocked out immediately by the Vikings. Let me show you what I mean. Houston Texans, they won by two points. Week two, they lost to the Rams 27 to 9. Um, week three, they beat the Seattle Seahawks by three. They beat the Dallas Cowboys by two. It was 12 to 10. Cowboys, as you might remember, were a terrible team last year. Um, the Jaguars, they beat 13-6. to That's kind of garbage. Uh, the Chicago Bears, they stomped out. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. The Arizona Cardinals, they also stomped out. So there you go. There's two games. Then they come out of their bye week. I know I said we would skip divisional games, but just for the record, they lost to the Falcons 26-9. to um, Then we get down to the Carolina Panthers. They won by three. And then we get to the 49ers. They lost that game. And then you get their last three games annihilated the Colts, the Titans, and the Panthers, and then got beat by the Minnesota Vikings. So especially early on, again, barely beat the Houston Texans, got absolutely wrecked by the Rams, and then they beat the Seahawks by six points, beat the Cowboys by two points, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'm looking at the Saints as this nearly unbeatable team. But a lot of these games were very winnable for these teams. The Dallas Cowboys, if they were just this much better, again, the, the, the Saints scored 12 points. That's it. There's opportunity here to beat the Saints. I, I, I know they're a very, very good team, and there's a lot going in their favor, but um, they're very beatable. They really are. It's just a matter of, of being on your game, and um, you, know, you, you can't mess up too much. And it is in New Orleans, which is not a good thing for Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't play well there. But um, as tough as it's going to be, there's going to be an opportunities. And as, again, as, it's one of those games where if you can just play well and not do dumb stuff, because they're not going to let you do dumb stuff. If you do dumb stuff, you lost. Right? Really good teams, you got to play a good game for four quarters. And if they can do that, I think they can beat the Saints, especially early on. Next up, I want to look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Definitely not nobodies. They've got Laurenti McRae and Al Woods are out. Both of these guys are along the defensive line. Laurenti McRae is an edge rusher. He's not their primary guy, so I'm sure Jaguars fans are not super worried about it, although they're not worried about anything other than getting the number one overall pick and getting Trevor Lawrence. So they're not worried about any of this, although I'm sure they're concerned for their players and all that. But anyways, um, 
But the fact of the matter is they, they got Josh Allen last year. They got Clavon Chase on this year. Um, even outside of that, they got Cassius Marsh and Dwayne Smoot, who are not good football players, but they take up more time there. So Laurenti McRae is just similar to uh, the Texans with one of a bunch of not very good guys. Laurenti McRae is one of a bunch of not very good guys. If you look at the grades, Cassius Marsh is 63. These are PFF grades. Josh Allen was a 68. Leon Jacobs was a 68. Dwayne Smoot is a 45. Laurenti McRae was a 67. So he's up there with Leon Jacobs and Josh Allen. But again, the plan is Josh Allen and Clavon Chase on to be the top two guys, no question. Now, Al Woods is a little bit different. He is the guy that gets the most snaps along the defensive line. He is a, I think, 6'4", 330-pound defensive tackle. He is their best run-defending player, I think maybe along the entire defense, but certainly among the defensive tackles. So he is their number one tackle, defensive tackle in terms of snaps, by far the best against the run. So once again, another run-clogging guy along that defensive line is going to be out, Al Woods, um, which is going to help the Packers be able to run the ball. I mean, I'm just telling you, man, the Packers are going to be really wise to smash the ball over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and now they can do it. I know you don't want to take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands. No, I'm not even saying you do that. We're still going to throw the ball more than 50% of the time, but just, just right in the mouth. As for the Eagles, they lost wide receiver Marquise Goodwin. Um, Marquise, kind of an older player at this point in his career. Um, one of the lower graded wide receivers on their entire team. They have Deshaun Jackson, who didn't play very much, but is still played at a really high level for when he was on the field. Obviously, Alshon Jeffrey was a top guy, and they just drafted Jalen Rager. So I don't know how much playing time Marquise Goodwin was actually going to be getting anyways. Um, so not a whole lot to go on there. As far as playing the Eagles, it, it's kind of tough because last year they weren't that good of a team, but they still wrecked us. And... Again, this comes down to, similar to the 49ers, this was a team that just ran the ball really well. You look at their offensive line, and we got to see what happens with, with Dillard at, at tackle, if that is the case. Um, but they still got Kelsey. They still got Peters along the interior. We, we've got to be able to blow that up. Again, it's it's when the – I say again, listen to the podcast if you want to get in on the again stuff. But um, it's the orchestration. It's, it's the – they've mastered just how this goes – as sort of a, a beautiful orchestra, right? It, it just, everything flows, and the Packers just get wrecked by it. The, the way that you beat that, everything is timing, everything is, you know, you go here, and then you release, and then you get to the next level. Just blow it up. Just get in there and just knock somebody to the ground, get in the backfield, and just cause chaos. That's how you do this whole thing. Um, and so they've got to be able to do that. But I'm not so sure about the Eagles' tackles at this point. It, it's really hard to maintain a really good offensive line. Packers are one of the few teams that seem to consistently be able to do that. They're not at the top, but they're still doing a fairly good job. The Eagles, they're showing some cracks. Um, a lot of their really good players are getting up in age. And, um, you know, Andre Dillard especially didn't have the greatest outing in the world. Um, outside of that, again, adding Rager I'm sure is going to be able to help. And Wentz, whether or not he can stay healthy, we're getting later on into the season. Not so sure about the running back. The corners... I mean, Darius Slay is the one big addition. I, I don't like their corner. I don't like their DBs in general. Whenever I do my mock drafts, you can check those out. I have them taking DBs, uh, especially corners. Um, but they still have a, a talented defensive front. They still have at least Edwards showed somewhat as far as linebacker, but if he can't do it, they don't have very good linebackers. So, so they've got – it's one of those teams where they've got some elite pieces that can just wreck your world, but they've also got a lot of really big holes. And when one of those holes is corner, and, yes, I'm including Darius Slay because – he played terribly last year. I don't know if he's going to be able to step up, especially year one in this new system when he's been with Detroit this whole time, especially as he's getting older. And beyond that, what has Slay ever been able to do against Devontae anyways? Nothing. So he's not going to be able to take out Devontae. They don't have corners. They don't have safeties. They do have a decent defensive line. So if we're going to be trying to run the ball a lot, that could be kind of tough. But I, I, the, the bottom line is... The Eagles could definitely beat the Packers, but I think the Packers are the better team of the two. I just do. I think they have a better roster overall, but we'll see what happens. I mean, that, that's further down the line. We'll have a better understanding of what's what when that time comes, but um, it should be a, a tough, tough matchup. I'm giving it to the Packers, but it's a tough matchup.
Finally is the Tennessee Titans. Um, it's another team kind of similar to the Colts, although nobody's really sleeping because they got to the playoffs. But I still think people are kind of sleeping on them. Um, if they get Jadavian Clowney, it really adds another dynamic. I think Clowney is another guy that's been somewhat overrated, but there's no question he would be a massive upgrade for this team and give them an actual edge rush presence. Um, but I just I like I've liked the Titans for a long time. They they've been what is the team? I don't know who it is now, but they they were at least in the past one of those teams where there's just there's no holes anywhere. They're starting to develop some holes as as people leave and whatnot. But I like their offensive line. It's not perfect all the way across, but they've got a solid offense. You know Taylor Lewan and Saffold and and Jones and now they've got. Um, uh, AJ Brown at wide receiver with Adam Humphreys in the slot and their their you know top tier Corey Davis who didn't pan out is now like their their wide receiver two or wide receiver three which in that role is going to work they've got Jonu Smith at tight end who kind of had a little bit of a breakout year not quite even 500 yards receiving but still in terms of his PFF grade or whatever he kind of was launched into looks like this guy knows how to play football you got Bayard at safety uh Kenny Vaccaro is overrated but he's there um Simmons I think is going to be a monster uh as a defensive lineman Daquan Jones isn't terrible um I just I I just think it's a good football team and then obviously you've got Derrick Henry who's just uh, the matchup of Derrick Henry and A.J. Dillon, especially as we talk about the end of the season, if, if A.J. Dillon gets rolling, this is when the big boys really start picking up, right? It's getting to be cold weather. You're getting, you know, tired out, worn out, injured. People are leaving. Everybody's just gasping. And then you got these just brutal um, running backs, brains slipping here, that are just smashing over and over and over again and, and, you know, I, I do like Simmons, but they don't have very good linebackers outside of Simmons. It's iffy, and even Simmons didn't really get to where I think he can be. And and, and on top of that, it's probably largely going to be his pass rush ability that you got to watch out for. Not that he can't defend the run, but you know, it's not all just run defense. He's a he's a tall, lean, monstrous, you know, especially pass rusher. Um, but I think this could be a game where both running backs and and uh, you know match throw in Aaron Jones quite a bit. I think this is going to be just a smash mouth game and a great way to end the season. I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm hoping and I'm thinking both of these are going to be playoff teams, but man, that's going to be a great matchup. I mean, as far as throwback football and just smashing people in the mouth over and over again. Plus, let's not forget, Lafleur is the guy that launched Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry was a, a backup. He was a nobody, and it made me mad because I liked Derrick Henry. I liked him more than Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm glad that he kind of, but it was it was Matt Lafleur. And his scheme and what he did and, and believing in Derrick Henry and saying, no, 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 this is my workhorse. This is my guy. And he, and he did. He ran him into the ground. Again, this is why I think A.J. Dillon is going to be the guy. He's going to take that. That's going to be his Derrick Henry, you know, similar. I mean, just an absolute freak. 295,000 pounds. Just he's faster than Aaron Jones. He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism. He's got the burst. He's got the whole package. Derrick Henry versus A.J. Dillon, man. I'm excited about that.